Hey guys, welcome back. Um, this video is going to be another sewing basics video for cloth pad making. Um, and I'm going to speak specifically about the, the common fabrics that we use to back um, a cloth pad with. And by backer or back fabric, uh, we're referring to the part that will actually have physical contact with the underwear or the clothing uh, that you're wearing. So this is going to be the layer that people use as the water resistant or waterproof barrier uh, and they have different qualities as far as you know what they feel like, um, whether or not they slip really easily back and forth or tend to bunch up, which honestly that varies from person to person. All of these fabrics are viable and they are the favorite of somebody, several somebodies out there, uh, each one of these. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is go to a little clip because I back my pads with what's called hidden pool. Um, that means that I put the, the waterproof barrier and then underneath it I place usually flannel um, so you don't see it. And I'm going to show you my own pool because I purchase it and keep yardage of it uh, to make my own pads. But the other fabrics I don't purchase or have, you know, like yard goods of them. Um, so I went down to my bathroom and where the lighting is really good and I did a little video clip of the three most common which are nylon, anti-pill, and windpro fleece on pads that I have purchased from other people so that you can see their water resistant qualities and kind of the, the, the texture of them that you're looking at. So I'm going to start with that clip. Okay, so I'm going to show you three pads that I have here. Um, this first one is a nylon pad from the Party in My Pants company. And nylon um, is a very slick um, fabric that's virtually waterproof. Um, you, this is a voiceover because the original recording didn't work very well, but I'm about to drop um, some water droplets on the back of this pad so that you can see it doesn't soak in, it just beads up on top. Uh, and then when you come in later and apply some compression by rubbing the water around, uh, to simulate walking or sitting on it or what have you, it still doesn't soak into the nylon. It just gets moved around. Um, and that logo up there I was pointing out was um, the Party in My Pants brand um, logo. And all of their pads and liners come backed in that waterproof nylon. This pad is backed with anti-pill fleece, and this is very, very common um, in all of the Etsy shops. Uh, that make cloth pads. This is a very common backer. And this is water resistant, not waterproof. Um, and you have to be careful with anti-pill because from batch to batch and color to color, even in the same brand, the water resistance can vary. So you need to test it after you've washed it if you're going to sew your own. Um, you see the water beads up like that. Uh, and it would sit there for quite a while before it would, on its own, just, just absorb in. You can even rub it around, as I'm doing here. Uh, and you see that it kind of spreads around on the surface. It doesn't really deeply absorb. Uh, if, however, you put your hand on it, as I'm going to do here in a second, and really push in uh, hard like you're sitting directly on it, uh, you can definitely force stuff to absorb into the anti-pill fleece. Uh, even really good quality stuff. So it is water resistant, not waterproof, and you have to keep that in mind. So you still have to be mindful and change the pads um, before they get completely saturated, obviously. Okay, the next fleece um, on this particular pad is Windpro fleece, which is not a type of fleece, it's a brand name. Um, it's put out by a company called Polar Tech. That's P O L A R T E C, Polar Tech. Uh, and it's very dense. Um, it's also a polyester fabric, and so it's you know basically the same kind of fabric, uh, but they have some proprietary weaves and such, and it's denser and it's much better at re resisting uh, water uh, than even the, the best quality anti-pill fleeces from other people. So here you see it beads up beautifully. Um, you can see the whole bottom water surface on that drop. And when I rubbed this in, I was using more force uh, than I did with the anti-pill fleece to demonstrate that it still, it, it just rides around on the fabric. And even when you push it in, you can remove your hand and a lot of it is still not fully absorbed into the fleece. It just kind of sits on top, so it's great. Hey guys. Um, I had a haircut appointment that I completely forgot about when I was doing the first part of this video. So um, between the clip and now, I, I went and got my haircut. Check it out. She did a pretty good job. Um, so just before we go on, just a couple little follow-ups about those three fabrics. 
Um, the nylon, the pros for the nylon are, of course, that it is virtually waterproof. Um, and a lot of people really enjoy that security. Um, nylon is usually, uh, when you find a nylon backed pad, it's usually like a super, super, like paper thin, like ridiculously thin cloth pad. Um, and a lot of people really enjoy that. Um, so the nylon doesn't work for everybody, but there are a lot of people that it's definitely their favorite kind. Um, the reason it's not my favorite um, is that it tends to bunch up on me. And um, I don't find that it slides. A lot of people complain that the nylon pads slide back and forth, for example. Like if this is a nylon backed pad and it's sitting in your underwear, like it'll slide back or forward too much. Um, for me, I don't find that that's the problem. For me, I find that this is what happens. And it gets kind of like crumpled up in the middle. And I don't much care for that. Um, but that doesn't happen to everybody. Again, these things are about um, underwear choice, um, body shape how long the pad is, lots of factors. So don't be shy about trying it. For a lot of people, it's their absolute favorite backer for, for pads. Um, Anti-pill fleece, the pros for that are that it is water resistant. It's one of the most commonly used backers for cloth pads out there. It's perfectly serviceable. It, it works really well as long as you know, you're not a person who has like sudden onset heavy flow uh, where you'll be caught in a place where you don't have anything you can change it out for. And as long as you're a person who will change your pad frequently enough that you're not completely saturating it. Um, it comes in a wide range of colors. Um, and really the only con to it is that it, um, it there's a little bit of variability in quality, even within a, a brand name, um, as far as how water resistant it is. And the ladies who use it frequently advise that when you buy, for example, a yard, of anti-peel fleece that you wash it, run it through the dryer, wash it, run it through the dryer, and then do the water test like I did in that clip and make sure that it behaves like the water drop did in my video. If it doesn't, if it just soaks right in, then you might not want to use that that particular piece of fleece. Okay, WindPro. Uh, the the only cons to WindPro, um, it, is, it is the king of fleece for this application. It is the most water resistant it is, you gotta work real hard to soak through a, a WinPro backed pad. I mean, it's good stuff. Uh, but it is more expensive than anti-pill fleece, excuse me. And um, it only comes in a, in a really limited range of colors because Polar Tech only allows, I guess, a certain number of them to, to come out for, I, I don't know, for yardage, but I do know that it's very difficult to find um, the range of colors. So there's black and that brown color that from my clip pretty much all the time. And then every now and then somebody will find a different color and be able to use that. Um, it is it is the gold standard for fleece back uh, pads. Okay, so now let's move on to the queen grand high poobah of all waterproofing fabric uh, for cloth pads. This is pool uh, polyurethane laminate. Um, and I have, um, I don't know, can you hear the, the rustling sound there? Um, that's the kind of thing we're dealing with here. Now I have a scrap that's left over from when I was cutting out cloth pads. And I'm going to try to show you on the camera to see the difference. This side here is the 100% polyester uh, cloth on, on this side. And that's what's making that rustling noise. And then when you turn it over, it's this shiny uh, polyurethane coated uh, fabric. I think you can tell a little bit there. Um, it's a little bit stretchy, not like cotton jersey or anything, but it's, you know, it has some give to it. Um, and pool can come like this, just plain white, which is what I buy because um, I hide my pool, and I'll talk to you about that in just a second. Um, but you can also buy pool uh, backed with all kinds of different prints. Um, a lot of them I find are babyish or for small children because the by far the most popular use of pool is in cloth diapers. Um, but you can find some really pretty prints out there. I've seen some really really cute pool backed pads. When someone says that it is a pool backed pad what that means is that you will receive it with this polyester side will be on the back and that's what comes into contact with your undergarments is you know this shiny plastic side will be facing inside the pad and the outside will be this 
kind of sheer type polyester. Um, the reason I don't like my pool on the outside, I don't like pool backed pads, um, is because they slide back and forth from front to back on me. Now, there are a lot of people out there who use pool backed pads and never have a problem, and it's their very favorite. Um, because pool is every bit as dependable for leak protection as that plastic back on the disposables that we all got so dependent on, you know, because we know we're not going to have leaks. You can have that confidence when you have a pool layer in your pad. Um, same thing. Um, but because I don't like it right next to my undergarment, I like to hide my pool. Now, this is a pad I made. The the back here, get it, cycle. Um, this is just flannel, good old soft, pilly flannel. Um, and um, in this backing underneath, right underneath this outward layer of flannel, um, because this is the part that sits on the underwear and it snaps around like this, um, right underneath here is a layer of pool. And I hide it because this way I get the protection and the confidence of the pool, but I get flannel, which has a much more grippy, fabric to fabric contact, and so it doesn't have the tendency to slide as pool occasionally does. So um, that's P-U-L. I'm gonna pause this here and see if I can think of anything else that I need to add. Okay, so honestly guys, I think that covers it. Um, those are the main um, backing fabrics that you're gonna have to choose from, whether you're sewing for yourself or whether you're going around to shop and purchase um, pads that someone else has made. Um, I hope it was helpful. Um, I hope that that answered most of the questions that you had about the the leak materials and you know what they're going to feel like on your underwear for the sliding and all of that. Um, if there's anything that I didn't answer for you about backing fabrics in this video, um, please leave a comment below. Um, like the video if you liked it, um, and just basically let me know what you're thinking. Um, thank you very much for watching. And I'm sure I'll be back soon. Thanks. Bye.